Okay, so when I was young, dyslexia was just getting out, like we heard the word. And in my perception as a younger person, it was always just seeing the B and the D backwards or the six and the nine confused. But you're telling me there's different spectrums and levels of it. Very much so. And 20% of the population has some form, but that's a guess. Right. So, okay, I know you work with children a lot, but I'm so curious for those who are adults, you know, young adults, who've gone their whole lives just thinking dyslexia was reading numbers backwards. I guess my question is, what are some signs that an adult maybe have lived with or got used to that is a sign they have dyslexia? For an adult, the easiest way is, are you a proficient speller? Really? Yes. Like that's one of the, if an adult contacts us asking questions, that is one of the first questions I ask. How well do you think you spell? One of the other questions I ask is, what did you think of school? Did you like school? Were you, you know, did you enjoy school? And then the other thing is, do you have family members, parents, grandparents, with the adults, sometimes even children that had difficulty in school or really didn't like school. Oh my goodness. So there could be whole generations of families who've just passed down like, oh, reading was always hard for me. And oh, we're just bad spellers and accept it this way. But really there's help and there's a reason. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes, absolutely. And I will say working the families, because we work mostly with children, we absolutely would work with adults and we would love to, but our caseload currently is primarily children. A lot of the parents are reflecting on what we say about their children and the work we're doing. And they're like, oh my gosh, that's me. (gasps) And, And so they are becoming more aware of how closely they fit the profile. And again, because of that hereditary component to it, it doesn't have to be hereditary, but there's a large percentage of kids that have it, that have parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles. The occupational therapist I work with, Frances, she is amazing. She'll have kids get up and write a letter with their whole body, right? To get that gross motor involvement in. Or like your hand is a marker and you have to do like an A. You spell in the air. Right? And as we're doing that, we're incorporating the sound that that, you know, letter A makes. It can make A or it can say A. So Jennifer, for as they're doing these physical activities, they're using a different part of their brain. Is that what's happening to connect with the sound? Yes, absolutely. And so it's like, it's a whole body, a whole system approach. This seems kind of new to me. This almost sounds like one of the alternative schools we hear about where the children are in the woods and they use rocks and sticks to do math and spell letters. Right. And the other thing that the program we use has, they use, we use three-dimensional objects. So like an apple literally represents the ah sound. Um, We have a banana that represents the b sound. And so, or a taco that represents the t sound. So we'll put the banana and the apple and the taco on the table and they have to read the word b at bat. Wow. Then we add the letters to that. So their brain can connect and process that visual three-dimensional representation with the two-dimensional letter with the sound all put together into a word. 